Hello and welcome. And I'm pretty sure you know already that Unreal Engine 5.2 is, you know, out in the preview. And of course, everyone, you know, starts recording videos about how amazing the Rivian demo was, you know, using the new procedural generating systems and all that kind of cool stuff, the new material system, all great. However, to me personally, the other very, very important thing that we can get from 5.2 is in fact this little thing from the Unreal Engine public roadmap, which says Unreal Editor native support on Apple Silicon. And it has, of course, not everything supported like Nanite and hardware ray tracing, we will talk about that in a second. However, the whole point is that we do indeed have right here the 5.2.0 preview 2 and it runs in Apple Silicon mode. I can showcase that by going into the activity monitor and as you can see, Unreal Editor now says the kind Apple. Ironically, the Epic Games launcher is going through the Rosetta, but Unreal Editor itself runs on the native Apple Silicon mode, which is great news for everyone who wants to develop on the new Apple machines. Now, before we begin, I wanted to say that this Mac, as you can see, it's the cheapest uh, Apple M2 Mac Mini money can buy. It has 8 gigs of memory. It's like literally the most basic M2 machine you can get. But uh, you can extrapolate the performance yourself. And given how everything works here, for example, if you have things like M2 Pro or M2 Max, it will be twice as fast maybe two and a half times as fast so anything you see here if you are anything higher than the most basic and cheapest m2 it will be better on your side so let's begin i will enable the real time and immediately we can see that we're running at 60 ish fps however you cannot get those fps if you are using the new temporal super resolution now as you will see me right now i'm using if i do the anti-aliasing we're using fxaa now everything here as you can see uh, if you zoom in close enough if you're watching like in 4k or whatever whoops um sometimes this bugs out you'll see that this here the distinction between this sphere or a you can see the aliasing here really well. As you can see, this is like stair stepping, like a zigzag here. It's because of the aliasing. And of course, the anti aliasing is supposed to come with this. Without the anti alias, it looks well, pretty much bad. FXAA gets, uh, makes a little bit of a blur and it looks a little bit better. But the best one is the TSR, the temporal. However, as you can see, we lose at least half of the FPS. And so, I want to just to show you that this thing works, but it kills, I don't know, 40% of the frames. So I don't want to really use that. So uh, just in case, I will be using the FXAA. So it kind of runs a little bit faster. It looks a little bit coarse, but you know, for this video, for this illustration, I think it will be fine. All right. So uh, let's talk about Lumen for a second. So Lumen is the global illumination system, which comes from Unreal Engine 5.2. As you can see, we already can see the result of it. Here, the cube that is close to this uh, structure, it is bouncing the global illumination bounce light onto it. So if I get it closer, you will see that indeed, this is the bounce light we get from the sun hitting this cube and cube well, basically illuminating this wall. Now, if we go to materials and start tweaking the material, for example, we will see the immediate results. Now it's kind of bluish, now it's kind of pinkish, red, yellow, green, you get the point. Uh, what I'm trying to say is it works and it works well, surprisingly. Now we can actually preview the lumen scene. We go to the overview and as you can see, it's a little bit more detailed than you would expect because if we go to the lumen you'll see that the software ray tracing mode is currently in the detail tracing however if we make the global tracing you will see that maybe we get a couple of fps 
in the detail tracing we may be loose in FPS or two, it doesn't really matter. However, this blobby box becomes a little bit more detailed box. So that's a win for me. I don't mind paying one FPS for that. And let's get back to the elite. Now what Lumens also provides, it actually gives us the reflections. At least in the software tracing mode, we can get the reflections for static meshes. Previously, the reflections were made as SSR, which stands for screen space reflections. As long as we saw some geometry in the viewport, it would be reflected in the, well, reflecting surface. However, with Lumen, we can actually not see the geometry in the screen and it will still be reflected, as you can see here. Because Lumen provides, this was the exact thing, uh, this is what we would see in the detail or global tracing. So enabling the detail makes it a little bit more detailed. And of course, if I get the screen percentage a little bit higher, you will see that we indeed have a pretty decent result. However, naturally, as this is not hardware accelerated ray tracing, we will not see, as an example of my custom metahuman Yina, we will not see the reflection of the metahuman because it's a skeletal mesh and skeletal meshes need to be, for them to be reflected by Lumen, it needs to be accelerated by ray tracing hardware solution, which is not currently present as set in the roadmap. But that is to be expected because Apple Silicon does not have the hardware ray tracing accelerators. Right, so I will hide you now for a second and because I want to talk with you about shadows. Now, confusingly, the shadows, let's see, uh, the shadow that the shadow map method says virtual shadows maps, but that actually isn't true and I can prove it really easily. So if I get closer, you will see this line or even this line right here, right? So further away from the camera, it's really, really low resolution. Closer to the camera, it's a little bit higher resolution. As you can see, there is this kind of line where it gets better quality or lower quality. Basically what it is, it is the cascade shadow maps and they're not and they are not virtual shadow maps as indicated by the project settings. So that's kind of confusing. Anyway, what it also means that these cascade maps are actually ignoring the clouds. Because if you have the virtual shadow maps in, for example, so on my Windows machine, right, when the sun is behind the cloud, we actually see the shadow from the cloud. But here, it's irrelevant, well, because it's not supported, because it's not really the thing they, they claim it is. Basically, if we zoom back, you will see the sphere here, right? As you can see, pop out, pop in, the shadow disappears. So basically, you, this is the cascade shadow, so it's not really the virtual shadow map. So there you go. Now, uh, speaking of the sky sphere, here uh, you will see that the volumetric cloud works surprisingly well. So we can real-time tweak the altitudes of the layers, we can make it look like absolute garbage or, you know, look it a little bit better, whatever. Uh, the interesting part here is that it's actually volumetric representation of clouds and it works surprisingly well on the Apple Silicon GPU. Again, I remind you that this is M2 in Mac Mini, not a pro, no nothing, just 10 cores of the M2 GPU, and it works really well. Next, let's talk about the MetaHumans. So MetaHumans, they work kind of relatively well, except for maybe a couple of things. Namely, we do not have the groom asset as we should. So here we have the female hair, and these things, they just don't compile, they don't work. As you can see, we cannot see it. I messed with the lots, I disabled, enabled them. I guess it has to do with shader compilation or maybe with the physics assets on the groom because previously people were complaining that enabling the metahuman was insta crashing the viewport because of the physics. Maybe they disabled the groom asset because of that. I honestly do not know, but it is what it is. Uh, currently we do not have the groom asset, but everything else 
seems to be working well as you can see we have amazing eye shader right here uh, we have the subsurface scattering working really well naturally there is no peach fuzz as you can see there is nothing like that uh, there is no eyelashes there is no hair well duh you can see that but everything else seems to be working and the most interesting part here as well is that the bridge finally doesn't insta crash the unreal engine because previously just literally the way to crash unreal engine was to press quixel bridge and there you go crash the desktop right now you can see that we can have go back to humans meta humans enable disable by the way this is how yuna should be looking but you know she isn't but okay turning that off and other interesting part is our nigra system that's actually let me see uh, let's activate it first and you'll see immediately that we have some sort of explosion going on and the fps drops dramatically but that is expected because this system runs on the gpu and this is the real-time simulation and it is amazing because i did not expect this to work and interestingly enough this thing running on apple silicon gpu actually represents the same improvements that we see on the windows platform that are around the Niagara simulation systems. So what else interesting can we see is I can showcase you that we can have a real-time smoke that's getting simulated here. Wait for shaders to be compiled and it should start working. Yes, here we are. So what's happening here is really interesting. We, let me just get rid of the sun. We have smoke simulation that is advecting a lot of particles and the smoke itself interacts with the geometry around it. So let me just show you. If I move it to the right a little bit, you will see that our smoke is being simulated. It's a little bit bright right now. Let me just tweak it just a little bit. Colors, I made the colors to be well, overly bright just to see if, if the lumen illuminates things around it. All right, cool. <laughs> Finally, we have something that we can see without lighting our eyes. So the particles illumination here, they are, you know, it's basically a sprite render, as it says here. It does not illuminate geometry around it as it does on the Windows platform. I suspect it has to do with uh, ray tracing acceleration. But the whole point is I'm trying to make is that we can see right here that we are indeed, where is it? We are, so we basically spawn 75,000 particles per second and they are being advected by real-time smoke simulation that interacts with geometry in real time. And all of that works on the cheapest M2 Mac Mini real time. Honestly, it's surprising. I know that it runs currently at 14 FPS, I know, but what I'm trying to say is it works. That's the most important thing. And of course, if you get a faster GPU, if you get a faster M2 Pro, M2 Max, maybe M3, by the time you watch this video, who knows? It will run faster, it will be more interactive. And of course, these effects, you literally can just get it and just move around and everything will be responding to whatever it is that you that you do and you get these amazing looking effects basically for free. What I'm saying is that it's, well, it's not very fast, but it is real time. So you can render it, you can have your visualizer for your, I don't know, video, song, TikTok, whatever. It doesn't really matter. So that's that. And I am surprised how well it works because like like we all know, previously just running pretty much anything that has to do with Niagara before 5.2 was eventual crash the desktop in Unreal Engine. Right now it works and it works well. So there you go. Um, final thing, of course, this amazing stuff that we see here, it doesn't really get reflected because again, uh, this is not yet supported. You can see that our sphere doesn't reflect anything. We cannot see the results. But anyway, there's that. This is, again, 5.2. It is running natively, as you can see. It is running on the weakest M2 possible, and it does it well. And if I delete my Niagara systems, if I delete Yina, so we can actually just run around without crashing, you will see that everything 
it's looking good. Again, not the fastest FPS, but the fact that it works and it works well. And we haven't crashed yet because ironically, I'm having more crashes on Windows now than I do have on Apple, which is almost hilarious. If not for the fact that I have to work with it and it's not really that funny, <laughs> uh, but you get what I'm saying. Anyway, there's that. It works. It actually works. Nigra works. MetaHuman works. Lumen works. It's amazing. If you are wondering if you should get the cheapest uh, Mac Mini 2 for developing Unreal Engine 5.2, I would not actually recommend it because I don't think it's enjoyable to be limited by 8 gigs of RAM. Because if anything else, if you can, you know, look past the small SSD, the real weak GPU, the amount of RAM is one of the more important things when you're trying to open like Blender at the same time, Houdini at the same time. If you want to, you know, do something with Unreal at the same time, it will just not fly. So just for personal entertainment, sure, it will work, but getting eight gigs of RAM is just not recommended at all, at least not by me. So anyway, there's that. If you're interested in more videos, don't forget to subscribe. If you have some ideas, suggestions, leave them in the comments. I try to read all the comments. With that said, hopefully you have a nice day and see you later. Bye-bye.